Uh, not well, I only got three hours of sleep. Not bad last night. Once I go to bed, I sleep. And once I sleep, I wake up. Not too bad. Often wake up around four in the morning. She wakes up at four in the morning. She says she sleeps quite well though. So actually that could just be her body's natural rhythm. She could be naturally a morning lark and she's supposed to wake up at four o'clock. I think often when people wake up at four, they lay there tossing and turning, tossing and turning for hours on end and then they often just fall asleep before the alarm goes off. Alarm goes off, shocks them into wakefulness and they feel awful. So my advice for, for her would be, if at four o'clock she wakes up, maybe leave it half an hour trying to relax, maybe do some breathing exercises or something like that. Um, but if she gets to half past four, actually get up get out of the bedroom because the bedroom becomes a bit of a prison and I think sometimes just getting on and starting the day makes a real difference. Oh, last night I did yoga for like 30 minutes. You something like yoga before bed is really, really good because what we're trying to create before we go to bed is a drop in heart rate and a drop in core temperature. So gentle exercise, it doesn't raise your core temperature up too much. It allows your, your core temperature to drop, so something like yoga or meditation or pilates is perfect before bed. I usually watch something on Netflix. It's harder to fall asleep if I'm watching something. It's harder to fall asleep if I'm like looking at my phone. Often many experts will tell you not to watch anything before bed on the TV, on your tablet, on your, on your device, but that can actually make people more stressed. I think, I think the bigger problem is, what are we watching on, on Netflix? They were a crime drama or watching a horror film, something that gets her brain ticking over. You can't go straight from that to sleep. And as she says, she really struggles to get to sleep when she does that. So I'd be actually saying to her, maybe change, change what you're watching on Netflix, maybe watch something funny or particularly something a little bit trashy or inane. I often do a really bad thing, which is drink a very strong coffee, but uh, it's never really affected me that badly because I always go to bed and read until I'm tired. So caffeine before bed is a real problem. Coffee, tea, energy drinks are really, really bad for before bed. The reason is caffeine actually directly impacts on our ability to produce melatonin. So the general rule with caffeine is in your 30s, you probably want to leave about, about six hours uh, in your 60s it will be more like 12 hours because we become more sensitive to caffeine as we get older. I use my phone. Mostly I fall asleep using my phone so this, the, there are times when I wake up and my phone's out of charge because I used it all night. I think it's, it's a bit like the, the, the TV viewing, it's, it's about what are you doing on your phone. So if you are scrolling through social media and your brain is worrying and you're getting angry about what people are saying, that will prevent you from sleeping because you'll have a, a rise in heart rate and, and that's, that inhibits the, ability, the body's ability to produce melatonin. But if you are, for example, using something like, it's like um, a meditation app, maybe Headspace or Calm, something that allows um, you to go through a guided process of relaxation, creates that drop in heart rate, that can really, really help. The other issue with phones is um, the blue light that they emit. There is some research to show that maybe that confuses the body because um, our bodies are controlled by two systems, a light dark cycle and a sleep pressure. So from the moment we wake up to the moment we fall asleep, we are building up to sleep time. So this might be saying to you, you're shattered, go to sleep, but your phone is saying, it's, it's daytime, it's daytime, it's daytime. And, and that is what is actually preventing him, him falling asleep. No, I probably wake up about an hour later, so not much of a lion. So an hour lighting, that's actually a good lion. He, he, he seems really disappointed with his lighting, but that would be about right. An hour, an hour and a half lighting doesn't affect your body's ability to fall asleep at, at night. Um, sleep better on the weekend than I do in the, during the week. The idea that we actually sleep better the weekend is quite interesting, because I think many people do, because there isn't this, the pressure of work there, and therefore our body is a little bit more relaxed and we get better sleep. Uh, yeah, um, usually I would wake up like at 12 o'clock and I just stay in bed till like 3 o'clock. We, we can unpick lots of ways why this is wrong. This is one of those ones, perfect example of, of, of what lots and lots of people do. Struggling in the week and at weekends are trying to catch up. They may be a night owl and so the, the, the weekend suits their, their body clock better, um, but they are but laying until 12 o'clock. So for example, if, if he was waking up at, at 6 or 7 in the morning to get to work and then and then, and then laying at the weekend until 12, that's actually a five hour difference in terms of his, his sleep cycle. Our sleep cycle loves consistency when it comes to sleep. It, it likes to wake up at the same time every day as much as possible, and that will then drive it to fall asleep at the same time every day. Because we can't fall asleep at this end, we can't make ourselves go to bed at a certain time, but a consistent wake up time will lead to a consistent sleep time. I listen to things like podcasts and stuff which take my mind off what I'm worrying about sometimes. I like it when people listen to things rather than watch things before bed because I think actually listening is a less engaged um, sense. 
But if you are, if you are finding out, finding that you wake up in the night and you can't get back to sleep, it might be worth having a noise on all night. In our sleep environment, if we've gone to bed with a bit of noise and a bit of light, if our body comes out of its sleep cycle and that noise and light has gone, but your body wakes up to check where it's gone. So either a podcast that lasts eight hours, or you can get like sound machines that will have a constant sort of white noise throughout the night. Chamomile, sometimes. Really dark environment, like dark atmosphere during the sleep will really help. So for us to create melatonin, it needs to be dark. And that's why on this occasion, a dark environment works. However, there's a behavioural aspect to it as well. So if we've grown up with having a nightlight on, on, for example, from being quite little, that's what we're used to. So actually for some people, total darkness just actually creates anxiety. So when it comes to light levels, I think that's a very individual thing and, and it's about working out what works for you. Uh, reading, not thinking, I need to finish that chapter, but making sure I'm at a point that I feel happy to leave a book as well. Reading's a real, real common one. I think most of us at some point in our lives have got into a routine of reading before bed. But I think, I think she really highlights something that we do need. It needs to in, engender nice thoughts in us. We need to, ha- we need to be create nice feelings in, in ourselves. So books are like TV. If you're watching something that's too engrossing, if you're reading something that's too engrossing, sleep will be a struggle. And, and just as you start feeling that sleepiness come as you're reading the book, put it down and, and go to sleep. If the temperature is right, like if, it, if it's not too hot, not too cold, Temperature is incredibly important to sleep. The two things we need to fall asleep are a drop in heart rate and a drop in core temperature, the, the, the temperature in our bodies. And I think a lot of us do sleep in rooms that are, that are too warm. So I would like the room, the bedroom to be, as you walk into it, you can feel a drop in temperature. But also consider your immediate environment between the mattress and the duvet. Phones, blocks of, of, of material for mattresses, so it doesn't allow an airflow and can make you too hot. And duvets, you know, a t- tug rating is a measurement of, of heat retention. So is your duvet too heavy? Is it, is it causing you to be too hot? We, we do often share a duvet in the, uh, in the UK. Um, and in many countries, we, people have separate duvets. And I would argue that's far better because that allows you to have your own little microclimate. And that person next to you, their heat is not interrupting your sleep. No, I usually go to bed when I want to sleep. And therefore, I typically sleep immediately after. This is my good sleeper who does it all, or does it all right, and, and he, he goes to bed when he's sleeping. And so many of us he, don't do it. We'll be sat there on the, on the sofa, we'll be watching TV, and we'll feel that sleepiness come, dropping off. And then we, we stay awake because we want to see the end of the programme. This, this, this person is great at going to bed, feels that sleepiness, and then off he goes to bed. And then wakes up when he needs to wake up. I love him. I suppose anything like this stress, worries. I sold my house last year, I had a few sleepless nights over things then. When we are stressed, we create adrenaline and cortisol. And as hormones, they, they prevent us from creating melatonin, the hormone that helps us sleep. And it, it makes sense if you think about it, when we have predators, if you were running away from a saber-toothed tiger, you wouldn't want to feel sleepy. It's our body's doing what it should do. When we are stressed and anxious, we are not, we are not supposed to be sleepy. But often, those stress and anxieties, um, of, of things that we can't control. At two o'clock in the morning, you can't do much about it. So we need to sort of learn to, to, to deal with those anxious feelings. Eight. Eight. Around eight hours. Should get eight to nine hours. I work on the basis of eight hours, sounds healthy. I think that's very individual. So we saw, we saw from, from our, our contributors that they all sort of said around eight hours. And I think generally, the, the general rule is be six to nine hours. The point that is made from this, from this contributor is really important. We are all different. We all have an individual sleep need. So understand your own individual sleep need. Who are you as a sleeper? How much sleep do you need? And sleep need is not just about quantity. It's actually about quality as well. A good six and a half, seven hours of good quality sleep. If you feel okay around 10, 11 o'clock in a day, you've probably had enough sleep. I think it's good for your sleep. Well, sometimes for me, drinking wine would help me a, li- help me a little bit. Well, it, it does help you get to sleep, but then I wake up about four times. So lots of people who sleep poorly will use alcohol as a tool to get themselves sleep. Alcohol and drugs, whether it's over-the-counter drugs or it's, it's, it's drugs like cannabis or alcohol, they will use them to try and, try and basically knock themselves out. But the thing to remember with alcohol is it sedates, it doesn't give sleep. So the sleep quality is really, really poor. It's a sedative as we go to sleep, and it's a stimulant um, later in the night. So often you'll find yourself falling, falling into unconsciousness, and then, you, and then you'll be waking up earlier than you want to because, because of uh, alcohol's effect on your body. So they will give you the impression that you have had sleep, but you will often find that you feel really, really awful the next day. So I did use an app that I would put 
I'd put my phone on my mattress whilst I slept and it would track my movement during the night so it would sense whether I was in a deep sleep, a light sleep or if I was awake um, and then in the morning it would tell me how many of hours I slept of each. It's like if I had an exam period I'd actually find it quite useful because I was able to see how much sleep I was lacking. <laughs> this isn't clinically proven to give you any indication of, of, of your sleep cycle so sometimes tech is, is not a good thing, it can reinforce in poor sleepers that you are a poor sleeper and therefore lead them to still sleeping poorly where tech that actually helps you sleep better an intervention so for example a meditation app on your phone that is actually good and a positive influence tech that measures and just tells you you're sleeping poorly maybe maybe not quite so good for poor sleepers apparently i snore a lot <laughs> loudly i snore really really loud sometimes i've actually even woken myself up from snoring i keep my boyfriend up i think we both snore but we both deny it <laughs> we both snore and we both deny it is, the, is the, the story of many couples snoring I think lots of us do snore and i think it, within society we kind of do laugh about it i think we can see this from every single one of the, the, the contributors um but snoring it, you know it can it can be a, a bigger issue it can be it can be a sign of, of sleep apnea I'm going to give a little example of, of what snoring and what sleep apnea sound like. Snoring can sound like, even in many ways, quite melodic. Um, sleep apnea sounds more like, because sleep apnea is, is our airways closing. It's our airways closing, so it's stopping us breathing. And it sounds more like a choking sound. I think if someone is suffering from that kind of snoring, you need to go and touch GP about it, because it's a really serious problem. The estimate is that 2.5 million people in the UK have sleep apnea undiagnosed. And I think it's something we really need to start addressing. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, power naps, perfect. If I don't nap, then I'm not like active, so I go home, take one hour nap, two hour nap, and then go to the gym, and then I'm more proactive that way. So I just want to pick out this contributor because we know that he doesn't sleep well and he's napping during the day. Poor sleep during the week, napping during the day, and quite long naps, two hours, two and a half hour naps. So that, you know, I'd argue that's a sleep, not a nap. But if I, if I am working with people who nap, we try and control the naps to before 3 p.m. Um, and we also make sure they're no more than half an hour. No, naps, I'm not saying naps are a bad thing. I'm not actually saying naps are a good thing. I think it's about the individual. If a nap works for you and doesn't impact on your sleep at night and it gives you energy during the day, it's not a problem. If you are sleeping poorly at night and you are napping during the day, it's maybe reducing the amount of naps or actually getting rid of the naps altogether. Yeah, when I'm doing a like, creative project, it actually affects my sleep because when I lie down, that's the most like inspirational I am, like creative I am. I work a lot with, with creative people. I work a lot within creative organisations and we do find creative people that they, they do seem to struggle to sleep a little bit more than, than, than other roles. So it's just making sure that you wind down properly. Don't go from work straight to bed. I think what we can take from, from these, these interviews with these contributors is we're all different. You know, there's not one size fits all solution to sleep problems. There are sleep issues out there, you know, most of us have some sort of sleep issue during our lives, but there isn't like a prescriptive approach if you do X, Y and Z, you will end up sleeping. Whether it's snoring, whether it's napping, whether it's your pre-sleep routine, whether it's what to do during the night, it's about understanding who you are as a sleeper. Are you a lark? Are you a night owl? It's understanding how much sleep you need in terms of hours, and in terms of quality, and it's about making small behavioural mindset and environmental changes just to just to get yourself sleeping a little bit better and we know that when we sleep a little bit better that leads to we sleep a little bit better to sleep a little bit better and, and i think if we can get that message out there we will we will help um, people get better sleep <laughs>